I was raised in a Christian home, um, 10 years old vacation Bible school. I heard the okay. gospel of Jesus presented well, became a believer then. 17 years old, felt the call to go into ministry because I had a youth pastor make a big impact on my life. Mm -hmm. 18 years old, became a youth pastor, got married at 20. At 20, I also bought a guitar because um, I wanted one of the kids in the youth group to learn how to play it, and then they didn't. So I had to, <laughs> I had to learn how to play this guitar. And so I, I really seriously was just like playing it because no one in my family is musical. So I bought a book and I figured out how to play a few songs, started leading for them. And then for the next seven years, just kind of started playing music for, for other people, for other youth groups and stuff. And okay. would write songs to go along with my sermons, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, Wait, so you would prepare a sermon yeah. and prepare a song to go with it? Yeah. And like sometimes you get like a funny, like silly song. Like, okay. I, would a, like I would write a love song uh, from the perspective of Jacob to Rachel. Okay. Uh -huh. Which sounded like a really sweet thing because you know he runs to the field and he goes, "My name is Jacob and I I, I want to marry you," but he also married her sister for like seven years, right? <laughs> yep, yep. And then had to work for seven years. It was a really weird, crazy story. So I would just write like soundtracks and stuff like that to go with okay. those. And then sometimes I would write a serious song to go with it. And it wasn't every week, but like when I felt like I wanted to do something, I would just you know just something special. And um, at twenty seven felt like God had radically changed what faithfulness looked like in my life. Um, and so. It, how so? Let's pause. Let me pause there. Yeah. How, what was that? What did that shift look like? Cause you at 10, you around 10, you became a believer. Yeah. 27. What changed in your faith? So, so someone told me this one time, they said that we will never stand before the Lord and him say, well done that good and successful musician or successful mm. podcaster or teacher or mom sure. or dad. It's faithful servant, right? And we can only be faithful to what God puts in front of us. And and I, I feel like the Lord has this really sweet way of when we are being faithful to him, he lights these things up in us. Like we feel this yeah. confirmation by, you know, just his nearness and, 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 and what he's doing in that moment. And I've been doing youth ministry for nine years and was loving it. it would still be a youth pastor right now. But there was something about music at that point and it wasn't because we had a tour bus picking us up or a record label wanting to sign us. It was just this feeling of like, if, if we're going to be faithful, I'm going to put music in front of you now to be faithful to. Mm -hmm. So we sold over half of what we owned, bought a single wide mobile home trailer, started driving a sausage delivery truck, was a substitute teacher, mowed grass, made ends meet, and tried doing the music thing. And trying meaning like I just played more youth camps and weekend retreats yeah. and just God to give us more opportunities to play, but I made some. I made some music. We recorded a few things, and the, and local the we here is this you and your yeah, wife. Had you, you, you had a little bit of a band, band. Yeah, at okay. the time. You know, my wife and I were making all these decisions together too. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I, I wrote these songs. We put them on a record. The local Christian radio station started playing some of these songs, which are just really neat. It's a guy who was from the same hometown, and so I, I asked him if he'd listen to the songs and see if, see if they were good. He goes, "I think they're good enough to put on the radio." So he starts playing on this local Christian station. And so the moment that I want to talk about is this moment where they wanted to have a listener appreciation concert. Now at that time, I had no idea if listeners appreciated it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really play a whole lot of like big concerts sure. or anything. So and he just said, we're going to see if they appreciate you or not. So we're going to have mm -hmm. this concert. So I show up and there were over 500 tickets sold to the show. And I'd never played in front of that many people in my entire life. Wow. I go in there and it was really crazy because I'm singing these songs that were playing on the radio and all of a sudden they're singing with me and I'm going, this is so strange because mm -hmm. most of them in the room with someone, if they're hearing me sing. And so the fact that they had heard it on the radio, now they're singing with me was just insane to me. Yeah. So the show's over with, it was one of the most amazing nights. And then I had this line at my merch table and I'd never had a line before. So that was fun. <laughs> I was like, let me go out there and just like tell people, thank you. So I'm in line and about halfway through the line, this young woman comes up and here's the moment. She couldn't have been older than 22, 23 years old. And she said, can I just tell you my story? And I said, yeah, sure. And she said, um, I don't really listen to Christian music, which I think is a weird thing for someone to say who's at a Christian concert for sure. a listener appreciation thing. But I'm like, go on. And she said, um, she said, I didn't listen to Christian music. She said, in fact, my last year has been really hard. She mm -hmm. said, about a year ago, I got in a relationship with a guy who I didn't really know, um, but he wasn't a very good guy. He said, but I wasn't a very good girl either. And so mm -hmm. it was volatile and it was abusive. And it only been going on for a few weeks when she found out that she was pregnant. And she said, I was just heartbroken, but I didn't know what to do. But I thought, you know what? Maybe maybe we just, I'll just go talk to him and we can see what we can do with this thing. And, and maybe something good will come from this. And it didn't go very well. He, she went to him and just said, hey, I want you to know I'm pregnant. And he goes, oh, well, I don't know you. I don't love you. And I don't want anything to do with this. You need to go get that taken care of. Wow. He said, I'm out. 
she's heartbroken, but also going like, you know what? I don't know him. This is, I, I, we're going to get through this thing. I'll go and talk to my parents. So she goes to her parents and she says, um, Hey, I just want you to know, um, here's the situation. And they said, um, well, he's right. Like, we're not going to help you either. In fact, what we'll do is, is we'll make the appointment for you right now. And so you, you don't need to be in the situation. We're not going to help you. Let's get this taken care of. Wow. They make her an appointment at a clinic. And a couple of weeks later, she is driving to the appointment. She said, I, I've never listened to Christian radio before, but I thought, I, God, I want you to say something to me. She was flipping through the dials. And all of a sudden, she falls on a station she'd never turned to before. And she heard a song that she'd never heard before. Um, and it was an old song that I wrote that just says, you are here and you are strong. You're mighty to save us from all of our wrongs. From the first sunrise to the day the sun falls, you hold us together because you're mighty to love. Like this mm. little lullaby Christian song. Yeah. And she said, tears fill up my eyes because I feel like God had said something to me. And I pull my car on the side of the road. She said, and I am just weeping. At this point, so am I. I'm going, this is, what in the world has happened? Wow. And she said, okay, okay, can I just introduce you to my son? And she <gasps> pulls around this two-month-old baby, okay? And that was the moment. That was the moment right there where I just said, God, these are not just melody and lyrics and songs. Mm -hmm. Your gospel is alive. And at 10 years old, it changed my life. And at 28 years old, I'm staying in a room with a woman I'd never met before. But somehow one of my songs that just talked about the mightiness of God's love stopped the death of a baby and started this life that she had now in a relationship with Jesus. She said, I'm going to church now. I'm mm. trying to raise my son correctly. And, and that was the moment that I realized that I, I don't ever want to, I've got a wife and three kids of my own and I love them so much. I never want to do anything else other than spend time with them. And if I decided to go off across the country so I could sing songs and people could cheer for me, that doesn't make me a good dad and a good husband. That makes me someone who just wants to lift up my own name. But if I can just be faithful to show people that the great love of Jesus moved in my life and that I can go out there and not just sing a song, but lift him up so that he could draw men to himself. That is a reason for me to stand in front of people and tell all the more of the goodness of God. Wow. Unbelievable. So what do you, what do you do with that? Did you just decide, okay, this is the path I'm going to take for real. It's, it's been, it's been, uh, so yesterday was 12 years exactly to my last Sunday as a youth pastor. Oh, wow. Um, and I'm gonna tell you right now for the last almost 11 years since that concert, um, I think about her every time I walk into a room to write a song mm. because I know, I know I, I, I can control what my voice is going to do and I can control what we write into a, a lyric or whatever, but I will never control where these songs go. Yeah. Cause, cause that's what's beautiful about what Moody radio does is that you guys aren't selecting the good soil for these songs to go to. And like mm -hmm. this person deserves to have this song. You guys are just saying like, we're going to be relentless with the gospel and anyone who has a car stereo, who has a radio in the corner of a um, of a hospital room. I, I've heard stories of my songs being able to tell people about the freedom of God while they're behind four feet of concrete and barbed wire in prison. Yeah. But, but the gospel is free and the gospel is alive. And so I think about that story and go, this could be a life or death opportunity. This could be an opportunity to remind someone of God's great love or teach them about it for the first time. And so like I said, that, that is something that forever has changed the way that I look at the ministry that I get to do um, and the importance of going like, okay, when I write a song, so I, I have two rules when I songwrite. Rule number one, this has been my whole time. Rule number one, everything I write lines up with scripture. I, it has to, because if God said it, it's important enough for me to talk about. And if God didn't say it, it's not worth me handing to anyone else. So first sure. rule is like, I got to line up with scripture no matter what I'm doing. And rule number two is I'm trying, God gave me these eyes that I get to see the world with. He gave me this heart that I get to feel and experience the things that he puts in front of me. And he gave me these feet to carry me around places that I go. And so I have to write from things that I am seeing and things that I'm feeling and places that I'm going. And so I want these songs to serve as time capsules. I want them to be something that, God, you are running these ideas through the battlefield of my heart. And I'm sifting through scripture to make sure that it is the right things that we're putting in. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, when I'm going to go write a song, I'm just trying to make sure like, okay, I know this can change someone's life. So the best chance for it to do that is for me to speak from a changed life and for me to point back to the scripture that, that, that firms up the foundation of anything we could be singing about. Yeah. You, you still sound like a pastor. Funny Listen, how that... I, 
<laughs> Funny how that happens, huh? You know what? It, it, it gets stuck in there after a while. But, <laughs> you know, but the thing is, we all are. We, yes. we are all out there. You will preach a sermon with your actions, or mm-hmm. you will preach a sermon by pulling out a Bible and standing behind a lectern and letting everybody have it. But at the end of the day, our life is a visual representation of the gospel. And all the preacher is doing is trying to point people back to a gospel. So yeah, I I I, I do listen, I every head bowed, every eye closed is not something I get to use very often anymore, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I do I do feel like that there's a constant invitation in my life to try to point people back towards um, the only hope that I have found that will sustain the ups and downs and hills and valleys of the life that we uh that I'm I'm living right now. Yeah. So the newest thing you've got going on, you've got a, a new book out. Yes. Based on the song that we play often, Walking Free. Tell me about it. Well, you know, that song's about three and a half minutes long. And if I'm trying to talk about the freedom of God, I realize I need a little bit more time to do that. And so when 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 I'm writing, again, trying to line everything with scripture, I'm trying to speak from my own experience. And I found like, you just can't write a 20 minute long song. You just can't do it. So you need three and a half minutes. So you guys will play it on the Christian radio stations and stuff. So, so. But after that song came out, I just kept hearing stories at merch tables about the freedom mm-hmm. of God reaching people where they were, about addiction being broken, about um, people walking out of like being in prison and hearing about freedom back there. And God taught them how to be free while they were still having a number on their chest locked up behind bars. Yeah. I heard people who were just like stuck in their lives or stuck in relationships and stuck in certain hard situations where they just needed freedom to reach them where they were, not that they could be good enough to be able to find that freedom. So I said, okay. So what if we broke this thing down and we said, let's let's not think about the the destination of our journey. Let's take it one step at a time. And so we broke this thing down into like 42 steps of saying like, okay, today we're going to take one step today. We're going to take a step from fear and towards faith. We're going to take a step from being reckless and in, into being relentless. We're going to take a step from our, you know, our anxiousness or whatever to the comfort of where God's at and, and just focus on one step at a time. And some of those steps feel like baby steps. Some yeah. feel like these big giant leaps in the direction, but at the end of the day, it's walking forward with Jesus who's right there next to us. And so yes. it, it, we found out that, you know, it's a little easier to explain that message in 250 pages over you know, three and a half minutes. This is not a self-help book. This is a Jesus help book. This is me going, I'm not someone who's on the other side of the finish line being like, hey, here's how it works. I've already finished it all. You just come alongside me. It's going, I am taking these steps with everybody else. I'm just saying like, can we just take them together? Because we're way stronger when we're doing this thing together. So we're just trying to encourage people to be like, hey, one step at a time. Let's, Let's see what it looks like to walk in the freedom that only God can give us. Yeah. What keeps you walking free? Wait, you're busy... You're a busy musician. Now you're an author, you're a husband, yeah. you're a dad. What keeps you walking free? The grace of God. It, it, it really, because the thing is, I, I think a lot of the times, and, I, and I've done this myself, I have confused what, what working with the gospel looks like versus working for the gospel. Mm-hmm. So, so what I never want to do, and I find myself doing it you know, at times, is I feel like that I have this checklist of God right. will love me if I blank. And we're we're trying, and, and sometimes I, I'm more focused on being a daunter of the word than a doer. Like I'm going like, mm-hmm. well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And I have to limit myself to this and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to try to knock all, like, check these things off the list that I'm saying like, I'm not doing that. So I'm better than this person over here or whatever. Right. I'm comparing myself, right? But at the end of the day, we are the only faith. We're the only religion that all other religions, their God is sitting somewhere at this pinnacle. And if you work hard enough, if you can be good enough, if you can check enough things off a list, if you can walk the steps that they tell you to walk in just the right way, then maybe, maybe, maybe you can get to where they are. Our God knew that we'd never, ever be able to reach his holiness and his goodness and his all the things that he has to offer. So what do you do? Jesus was sent down here to meet us in the midst of our mess, in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of our never going to make it. And he sits and he goes, I will help you get up. I will strengthen you. My strength will be made perfect in your weakness. And I'll walk with you. How beautiful is that? So what keeps me walking free is me going that on the days where I fall short, which heads up every one of them. (laughs) I am stricken with all this humanness inside of me right now. And so I all will fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is this eternal life through Jesus. Yeah. And that while we, the great, uh, God's great love was demonstrated for us in this way, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mm-hmm. So him knowing the depths of all of my bad, he says, 
My goodness will overcome these things and I will help walk with you. So the nearness and the friendship that I have with Jesus is what continues to, uh, is the only way for me to continue to walk in any kind of freedom. Snapshot Testimony is a Moody Radio podcast. If you'd like to connect, you'll find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search Snapshot Testimony. I'm your host, Allie Domersant, and together we're sharing the moments that shape a life of faith in Christ. Thanks for listening.